In Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah Ta'ala. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we ask for His forgiveness. Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina. And we take refuge with Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala from the evil of ourselves and the evil consequences of the decisions and choices that we make. May yahdihi Allahu fala mudillala, whomever Allah guides, no one and nothing can lead that person astray. Wa may yudlil fala hadiyala, and whomever He leads astray. Because of that person's willful decisions and choices, because of that person's oppression of other people, because of that person turning away from guidance that is available and clear to him, or any other reason why a person may deserve that Allah lead him astray. If Allah leads a person astray because of what he deserves and because of what his own hands have sent forth, then let him know that no one else and nothing else will guide him after Allah. And I testify that nothing deserves our worship, our absolute love and devotion and submission and loyalty, loyalty and compliance, except Allah alone and without partner. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we've talked about the important role of the father in the family. We've talked about the role of the mother in the family. We've talked about the role of the children in the family in previous khutbas. Today, we want to talk briefly, because it's a huge topic, but briefly some major points as it relates to the relationship between the husband and the wife, marriage. It is important that in marriage, just like in any other aspect of our deen, that we are different from those who disbelieve. This point cannot be emphasized enough. We go out of our way to be different from those who believe, who disbelieve, excuse me, in practicing our Islam. And so marriages, which are failures in this country, and the divorce rate has decreased in the recent years, but that's not because the marriages are more successful, it's people are not getting married. It's people are not getting married. That marriages in this country are a failure. Why are they a failure? Because they're based on un-Islamic criteria. That when we look at marriages, they are based on things that are super, superficial. The marriage of the disbeliever is just like his social media page. Full of glamour and beauty and what they want you to see of their lives. But in reality, it's empty and void and miserable. And so the Muslim takes honor in practicing every aspect of the deen of Islam. As Allah says in Surah Ghafir, فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ وَلَوْ كَرِيَتْ كَافِرُونَ Call on Allah and worship Allah sincerely, making all of your actions sincerely for His sake, even if the disbelievers do not like it. And so what we want to cover, inshallah, are three main points. Three main points and considerations that we as Muslims want to keep in mind as we look at the concept of getting married. That it's not this romantic marriage that they try to sell to us, but that marriage in Islam is much deeper. The first point to keep in mind is that there is no success without the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person begins the search in getting married with calling on Allah and asking for help. And when he finds someone that he thinks, or she finds someone that she thinks, or the wali finds someone that he thinks will be suitable, that you make istikhara, that you call on Allah because you know Allah and I don't know, and you have the ability and I don't have the ability Allah. And he continues to make dua, asking Allah to guide him to good and save him from evil until, until the marriage is completed or they part ways. As Allah mentions in Surah Ali Imran, and the ayat perhaps is revealed in jihad, but it covers all aspects of life. If Allah helps you, no one can overcome you. And if he deserts you and abandons you and leaves you to yourself, who's going to help you after Allah? And 
And so let the believers put their trust in Allah, not on their good looks, not on their bank accounts, not on their jobs, not on their family relationships and connections. We come into marriage depending on Allah. We do not know the unseen. The person that we think will have a joyous rest of our life with can be the cause of our daily misery. And so a person has to know that a good choice is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has to ask Allah for help. Number two, that typically when people want to get married, what they tell the imam at least is, I want to get married because marriage is half my deen. That's, that's, the, that's the phrase people like to say. Marriage is half my deen. The actual hadith wording in the awsat, al-mu'ajam al-awsat li-tabarani, the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, man tazawwaja faqad istakmala nisful iman. Whoever gets married, then he has completed half of iman Whoever gets married, then he has completed half of Iman. So let him fear Allah in what remains. Let him have taqwa of Allah, obedience to Allah in what remains. And so referring to marriage as half of Iman or as half of the deen, then if that's what you actually think this is, if marriage is deen, treat it like deen. If marriage is deen, that's a big word. Inna deen عند Allah al-Islam. The deen with Allah is Islam. When you're in your grave and I'm in my grave and the angel comes, he says, ma deenuk. We hope to say, deen al-Islam. My deen is Islam. And so if this is deen, if this is half of deen, treat it like deen. What does that mean, treat it like deen? That means, number one, the foundation of deen is beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. If this is deen for you, if this is half of your deen that you're trying to complete, then where is learning what makes a successful marriage? Yani, did Allah leave that out of the Quran? Did the Prophet ﷺ not talk about marriage? From the benefits of the Prophet ﷺ marrying Aisha radiallahu anha at a young age is that because of her young age, she had a good memory. And because of her good memory, she was able to relate to this ummah what no other people had access to, which is what the Prophet ﷺ was like as a husband. What went on in the house? And that's why you'll find that amongst the narrators of hadith, the woman who narrated the most hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is Aisha radiallahu anha. Her hadith number, 2,000, over 2,000. The next wife of the Prophet ﷺ that comes close is Umi Salama with 500. What's the difference between 2,000 and 500? Aisha narrates these hadith so that we can know what the Prophet ﷺ was like at home, so that we can what? Emulate him. Follow his example. Say, if you love Allah, then what? Follow me. And Allah will love you back and forgive your sins. This is deen, which covers every aspect of our lives. So if we're serious about marriage being deen, then we need to be learning what is marriage in Islam, so that we can put it into practice. And this shows the evil of certain men who seek out to marry new Muslims or ignorant sisters who don't know their deen so that they can take advantage of them and oppress them. They seek out those who are ignorant. They don't encourage them to learn so that they can know their rights and ask for their rights and remind about their rights. They want to take advantage of them. What they don't recognize is that they are only harming themselves. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم 
حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you has completed his iman. Yani the iman necessary to go to Jannah until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So this is deen. This is iman. If you are concerned about completing half of your iman, as you say, then where is the love and the concern that you are supposed to have for another Muslim that is a part of completing your iman? The Prophet ﷺ said, you don't have Iman, any complete Iman, until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Number two, also in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, collected in Nasa'i, the Prophet ﷺ, Allahumma, inni uharriju haqq da'ifayn, al-yateem wal-nisa, al-yatama wal-nisa, wa kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, I call you to witness the severity of the sacredness of the rights of the two weak individuals. Allah, I call you to witness that I declare the rights of these two weak groups of people to be forbidden, to be sacred, to be taken very seriously. Orphans and women. Yani the Prophet وسلم, says that the, orf, the rights of the orphans and the rights of women are serious because they are weak. And a man puts himself in a very difficult situation because as the Prophet وسلم, mentioned to Mu'adh when he sent him to Yemen, hijab. Beware of the dua of the oppressed because there's no screen, no shield between that dua and Allah. And so a person who harms a woman because he doesn't know what rights she has and takes advantage of a woman, not teaching her her rights or giving her access to learn her rights. A person who oppresses a woman has put himself in a bad situation. In a bad situation for himself, in a bad situation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, if this is deen, if you want to complete half of your deen, then we begin with what Allah began with. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi that Allah says, My slave cannot draw nearer to me with anything that I love than those things that I have made mandatory upon him to do. And so when we come into marriage, we have to look at the mandatory so that we can fulfill it. And when we say mandatory, that's not just the things we have to do, but also it includes the haram that we are required to stay away from. And so in getting married, we're able to stay away from some haram, from falling into a zina. But what about the other side, which is fulfilling the obligations? Because that woman has rights, and that man has rights, and those rights are a part of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about deen, deen is not just salat and zakat and hajj and fasting Ramadan. It covers every aspect of life. How we deal with our families, how we do business. No buying and selling when the adhan is called for Jumu'ah. You can't buy and sell anymore. This is deen. So if we're trying to complete deen, we have to learn the mandatory. We can't put Islam into practice if we don't know it. And so we have to be serious about it. Number four, deen itself is the criteria for a good spouse. And so Western marriage is based upon what? It's based upon looks. We looked at each other and we fell in love. Allah says, lower your gaze. Allah says, look down. If you see something that amazes you, then put your head down and ask for her father or her brother or her wali's phone number so that you can contact him. Ask what happens in the streets and happens on college campuses where people are falling in love. This is not the deen. This is not how Muslims interact. And if this is what marriage is based upon, no wonder 
No wonder people break up because there's no barakah in it. Allah isn't blessing it because it's starting in the wrong way. It's starting in disobedience to what Allah says. And so Allah addressed the men. A woman is married for four. Tunkah al maratu li arba. Her money, her beauty, her social status, and her deen. Deen is last. He mentioned deen last because that's what people consider last. Be a winner by getting someone with deen. Tell about your deck. And if you don't, you're going to be a loser. Win. Be victorious. Overcome this dunya. Nah. Overcome this dunya with a good religious woman. Someone that's going to remind you when you're oppressing her. So you don't go to hell. Someone's going to get you up to pray. Because they want you to go to Jannah. Someone who's going to. Be available for you to fulfill your desire. So that you don't fall into haram. And if you don't. You will be a loser. This is the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu To men. And the advice to the awliya. Not to the woman, because a woman doesn't marry herself. If a man comes to you, Wali, and you are pleased with his deen, and you are pleased with his character, look at his character. Because whatever character he has is going to trickle down to that family. It's what his kids are going to grow up on. Your grandchildren are going to grow up acting like him. And the woman is going to either be in a good state or she's going to suffer based on the character of that man. And how do you know his character? Look at how he is with his family. Ask his mother about him. Ask his father about him. Ask his brothers and sisters about him. What kind of man is he? Ask his uncles and his aunts. Because even a kafir, even a disbeliever, a Muslim is required to be good to his mother and father. وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا وَصَاحِبُهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا And if they push you to associate partners with me that I have not allowed or legislated, do not obey them and be a good companion to them in this dunya. Ask his parents. Ask his brothers and sisters, what kind of companions has he been to you? What kind of character does he have with you? Because however they know him, that's how you can expect him to be with your daughter or your sister or your mother, whoever else it is that you're trying to marry. And the Prophet ﷺ said to men, a dunya mata, that this whole world is temporary enjoyment. Wa mata, zawjatun saliha. The best temporary enjoyment you can have that's going to help you to get somewhere is not just a wife, but a righteous wife. <clears throat> Someone who fears Allah and loves Allah and again wants to help us get to Jannah. Number five, and these are points about the importance of deen. We say we're going to talk about three points. This is the fifth point related to deen. Is that marriage is work. And that's why when Allah talks about what he places between the spouses, he doesn't say mahabba. Because habba is just the natural love that a person has for something. And that's why when Allah talks about money and wealth, what tuhibbun al mala hubban jamma. You love wealth and it's natural in you. Zuyina lin nas hubbu shahawati min al nisa. Men naturally love the shahwa. The desire that they fulfill from women. That's natural. But when he talks about what he places between the spouses, he placed between them mawadda. What is mawadda? Mawadda is love that comes from work and is based upon the qualities and the actions that someone does. And that's why Allah is al-wadud. 
وليس المحبوب From the meaning of Allah's name, Al-Wadud is that he's done more than enough and he has the qualities that should make you love him. That if you looked at Allah's qualities and his actions, what he's done for you should make you love him. And if you want his love, you got to work for it. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me. You got to strive against yourself to gain Allah's love. And the last point of why deen is important is because if we want lasting love, only Allah can give that. And Allah will give lasting love to those whom he loves. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the hadith of Abu Hurairah, hadith number 38 of the 40 hadith, as we already mentioned earlier, my slave cannot draw near to me with anything more beloved to me than what I've made mandatory. And he continues to draw close to me until, with extras until I love him. So the way to get Allah's love is by fulfilling the mandatory to him and to the creation and doing the extras. And we continue to do those extras until we gain Allah's love. And guess what happens when you get Allah's love? As mentioned in the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim, that when Allah loves a person, he calls Jibreel. And he says, Jibreel, I love this person, so you love him too. And Jibreel calls out to the people, excuse me, to the creatures of the heavens, any the angels. And he says, creatures of the heavens, Allah loves this person, so love him too. فَوُضِعَلَهُ الْقَبُولِ فِي الْأَرْضِ and the people of the earth, the righteous people of the earth, love him too. And if Allah, if a person is obedient to Allah, doing the mandatory, fulfilling the rights and the obligations, and doing those extras, he will gain Allah's love. If a person fulfills his spousal duties, he will gain Allah's love. And if he gains Allah's love, then Allah will place the love for the righteous creation. in their hearts. Allah will place the love of him in the hearts of his righteous creation as Allah mentions about Musa. وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي And I placed over you love from me and that anyone righteous who saw Musa couldn't help but love him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who make, make us of those who fulfill the rights of the spouses who understand what an Islamic marriage is and seeks to put it into, into practice. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima kathira. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we've talked about the importance of successful marriage because successful marriage is important to the family. And successful marriage is going to be successful if a person is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we said that we we're going to mention three main criteria that we can do or three main things that we can do that will help marriages to be lasting you know, amongst us Muslims. Number one is that we depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask him for help. Number two, that we treat this as deen. And so we are sincere. We follow the sunnah. We seek out beneficial knowledge. What is required of me in this marriage? And we seek to put it into practice. The mandatory first and then the extras. Seeking to gain Allah's love because it's through Allah's love that we have lasting love for one another. And just as a point, you know, just as we're talking about deen here, and a person comes up and he says, I want to complete half my deen and he doesn't pray. How does that work? You don't have a deen if you don't pray. And that has to be what we're looking at. And he sometimes, and he, subhanAllah, may Allah help us and may he protect Muslim sisters. We have to have any concern for Muslim sisters because they really are taken advantage of. And he, they, they, they think that this brother has deen because of all these hadith and things that he quotes. But he's talking to them privately without, through the, without the wali. He doesn't pray. He's alone with them. 
See, this is not the deen. You know, I don't care how much, how much hadith and Quran someone is spitting out to you. If he's alone with you, as Allah has told him, the Prophet says not to be. If he is messaging you and calling you on the phone privately, he's not praying. He has no deen. Consider that shaitan taught Abu Huraira to recite Ayatul Kursi before going to bed. Consider. Shaitan taught Abu Huraira to recite Ayatul Kursi before going to bed. Don't be, don't be fooled by the speech. Don't be fooled by the speech. The last point, point number three, is that we are human beings, which means we are going to make mistakes. Do not expect perfection in this. There is no perfect. You want perfection? You got to get to Jannah for that. If you're getting 75% of a good spouse, you're doing well. You're passing. Yeah, 75 is a C. You're doing, you're doing good. But don't expect perfection. And he, sometimes we come into this and we expect women and men to be perfect. We're not perfect. We're all trying. Well, Allah, is, Allah has promised hell for those who disobey him and promised gender for those who obey him. Are we doing perfectly with him? No. So, so uh, what do we expect? How do we expect perfection in a marriage? As long as we are sincere and trying to do our best, that's the best we can do. And if we're not perfect, then we also have to be forgiving. The Prophet ﷺ himself had disagreements with his wives. It's recorded in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, in Sahih Muslim and other places. And Omar had disagreement with his wife. And Ali and Fatima, radiallahu anhumah, had disagreements, had differences. That's a part of being human. And having a disagreement doesn't mean that we're not good Muslims. We're people. But we can't have this criteria for perfection where anytime someone makes a mistake, then we're ready to finish it. And we can't, men, men, I'm talking to us, we can't use divorce as a weapon of correction. Every time something bad happens, divorce, divorce, divorce. If you were at a job and every time something happened at work, your boss tried to motivate you by telling you, I'm going to fire you, right? What would you do? Look for another job. Put your wife there. If all the time you're talking about divorce, 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 that's your method of correction, then she's not going to want to stay. We've got to be smart. We gotta learn our deen, we gotta put it into practice. And we have to ask Allah for help. And from the beautiful dua of the Prophet وسلم, is the dua of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, that Ibn Rajab, <coughs> no, excuse me, that Ibn Taymiyyah did an explanation, no. One of the scholars did an explanation, if I can't bring it to mind right now, but and it was mentioned as, in, in an, as an explanation in a book, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, where he says, that the Prophet Sallallahu used to make dua, Allahumma inni yasaluka fi'al al-khayrat. Oh Allah, I ask you to help me to do good deeds. Wa tark al-munkarat. And help me to leave evil deeds. Wa hubb al-masakeen. And loving those who are poor. Wa an taghfira li wa tarhamani. And that you forgive me and have mercy on me. Wa idha aradta bi qawmin fitna, faqbidni ilayka ghayra maftunan. And if you intend or will for a people of fitna, something that will take them away from their deen. Then Allah, take me unto you and keep my deen intact. And then he said, Allahumma inni yasaluka hubbak. Oh Allah, I ask you for your love. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk and the love of those whom you love. Wa la'amal alladhi yubaliguni hubbak. And for the actions that will help me to get your love. Allah, I ask for your love and the love of those whom you love and actions that will help me to attain your love. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار والله ويأسف في الجود في الصلاة وفي الجود في الآخرة وفي الآخرة وفي الآخرة ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب أو الله don't let our hearts deviate after you've guided us Allah help us to hold on to our Islam until we meet you until we die don't let our hearts leave this Islam that we've committed ourselves to after you've guided us and give us mercy that only you can give. You are the one who gives and gives and gives until Wahab. 
ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما او الله make our wives and our children this is a dua we need to be saying all the time oh Allah make our wives and our children the joy of our hearts by seeing the muslims and practice islam and loving islam and hating kufr واجعلنا للمتقين اماما and make us men imams of taqwa اللهم انا نسالك حبك اللهم انا نسالك فعل الخيرات والله we ask you to help us to do good and to stay away from evil and to love those who are poor and that you forgive us and have mercy on us and if you decree a fitna for a people that will take them away from their deen then take us unto you with our deen intact o oh allah we ask you for your love and the love of those whom you love and for actions that will help us to attain your love wa aqimus salat